Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. You can take a look at those games in the links in the description. So I've got a time lapse here of artwork, of me working on um, artwork for Once Upon a Coma, my current game. And I'm gonna try and relate that to those five tips that I'm gonna tell you about making your first game. All right, so the first thing that I do when I start any game is I wanna make sure that I get inspired. So whether it's taking a look at um, you know video games that I love or screenshots, from movies or artwork from various illustrators that I respect, I usually compile a list of various um, things that really inspire me that I wanna try and put into my game. So in the case of Once Upon a Coma here, um, you can see me going back and forth, back and forth between screenshots and videos of Resident Evil for GameCube. Uh, that game made a huge impact for me in my life, especially when I was a teenager. Me and my brother would just sit and play that game all summer long. Um, and that game has an incredible mood, incredible environment, and it's certainly inspiring just to look at. So as you can see, I'm sort of taking a look at those screenshots, taking a look at um, video clips of that game, and seeing if I can put them into this 2D environment for Once Upon a Coma. This level here is the um, Insane Asylum. It's the last level for Once Upon a Coma. And as you can see, I'm taking some colors and also some architectural elements um, from screenshots from Resident Evil and seeing if they work in my game. Um, it's really, really important for you to be humble and realize that you're not perfect at everything. So I'm really gr good with landscape art, but when it comes to interiors, not so much. And that's where getting inspired and looking at other people's work um, and seeing how they did it and seeing if you can do it yourself is crucial to ensuring that you start up your game on the right foot. So the second tip I have um, for when you're starting your game is to be sure that you define the rules. Um, that means that you can uh, take a look at uh, maybe a text file and write down all these different rules um, for your game. Uh, maybe look at other games and how those games, um, what those rules are for those game, the games that you really like. Um, I kind of said that weird, but yeah, just look at other games that you like, see what those rules are. Um, so in the case of Once Upon a Coma here, um, with the artwork specifically, there's a rule that I have at the very beginning um, of this project, and that was, if the ground is black, especially on interiors, you can jump on it. That's a rule, and I had to sort of learn this rule the hard way with um, the first game that I made, and I showcased my first game, and it was my first Flash game, and it was called Coma, and it's actually um, sort of the prequel to this game. Um, I was at GDC um, showcasing Coma and people were very frustrated because I hadn't defined a rule about what could be jumped on. So a lot of people thought you could jump on things and you really couldn't. So if I would have clearly defined those rules, it would have saved me a, a ton of headaches in the long run when working on the artwork. So the next step or the next tip for making a great game, especially making a great game for your very first time is to build for scale. So as you can see in this time lapse, I use a lot of repeated objects over and over and over again. So in this case right here, I'm actually working on um, a railing system for the interiors here. So what I could do is sort of make the railing look unique by starting from scratch and building the whole thing out. But as you can see here, what I do is I build two different sets of railings and I duplicate them across the board. And I'll save those railings, just two railings, um, I'll save them in the Adobe Creative Cloud library and just duplicate them throughout the whole level. Um, so what makes them look unique in the long run is going through the polish phase, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. Um, so all of my graphics here are, are repeated. You know, I, I find myself duplicating objects more than actually creating new objects. And I think that's really important when you're working on your first game, especially when you have a really small team. You wanna make sure that you're building for scale and that means that you can reuse objects, reuse code, reuse classes, reuse gameplay mechanics as much as possible while keeping the game unique. And again, that goes to our polish phase, which we'll talk about in a second. So as you can see here, I've got textures that I've created, um, various wallpapers for the walls that I've created. I've even got brushes that I use. So the moss at the top of this scene is a simple brush. So I was building for scale and all those things, most of the things in this scene were created at the very beginning of the project. So the fourth tip is to lean into your talents. And this is a really scary thing to do because I think a lot of us don't really know what our talents are. So obviously just test the boundaries, see what you're good at. 
Um, find people you trust, so whether it's family members um, or friends or just people close to you. Find out what your talents are by just asking them, you know, what am I good at? And even if it's something subtle, maybe maybe you're, you know, pretty good with math or good with maybe engineering. Maybe you can be a great coder for your video game and you can lead into um, writing really good code, really clean, simple code that allows your game to maybe have a lot of stuff going on while keeping, you know, the CPU and the GPU pretty low. Um, that's one al alternative to maybe if you're not so great at graphics, you can lean into code. Or for me, I'm really good with um, atmosphere and ambience. So with my games, even though I'm a decent artist, I tend to focus on ensuring the mood and the ambience of a game, um, of the game is, is really special. So for this scene here, adding a lot of shadows, adding a lot of um, darkness, especially in the background, so you can see that dark blue at the sky, um, makes it feel really moody, feel really dark, and having these sun shafts come across the scene really allow the scene to be ambient, moody, um, and atmospheric. I was sort of born with this skill, and I decided that I was gonna lean into it, and it really paid off. Um, so whether it's music or maybe you're a great storyteller, lean into those things and don't be afraid to reach out to other people, maybe friends or you know, fellow students who are good at certain things that they can lean into their talents. I think that's the best way to start off on the right foot when you're making a game. As opposed to making a bunch of generic stuff that maybe it's generic music, generic code, generic artwork. Lean into your talent and find other people who have talents that you don't have. Um, and this is a cert certainly a humbling experience, but it's really gonna help you make the best game possible. So finally, budget for polish. And this is something that I can't stress um, enough. Uh, a lot of times the, the final 90% of your game de game's development um, is actually really like the final 40% and you just don't know it. Um, you think you're done with your game and you're not. And it's frustrating because you thought you were going to be done, you thought you were going to ship, maybe even thought you were going to have some potential revenue uh, maybe in two weeks, but in reality it's going to take you you know, three or four months to polish out your scene, or polish out your game, excuse me. So for this scene here, um, the polish is really just adding in small elements to areas that seemed a little blank. So there were empty wall, empty wall space um, where I'm adding candles here, and again, I'm just building for scale, so I've got one candle, um, I'm gonna set it to be a prefab in Unity, and I'm just gonna use that candle across the board. Um, so here I am also adding shadow to add depth to the scene, and I'm also referencing, again, the, very, uh, the second step in this video, and that is um, I'm referencing the rules that I set up at the very beginning. So in this case, I've got the rule that says, if anything is black, you can jump on it. Um, this rule has been kind of muddied a little bit because the scene is so dark. There's so many shadows um, and oftentimes so much going on, especially in these moody atmospheric type games. It's really hard to see that rule play out um, effectively. And so that's why I'm adding these slight polish elements of fog and shading with gradients, like um, heavy lighting coming up from the ground um, to allow the contrast um, for the black areas to be jumpable. Um, so this is me just referencing rules that I've established at the very beginning. So make sure your polish phase is, is referencing the rules that you set up. So here I am just adding little story elements. Um, and this is a great time to add story elements. Let's say you're really good at you know, making a puzzle game. Well, it couldn't hurt to, in the polish phase, add in a little bit of um, story elements that help make your game a little bit more special, add a little bit more value to your players. Um, throwing in tiny bits of story and revelations maybe about your character can go a long way. So a good game design rule to follow is if you're ever leading the player down a path or they beat something, make sure you reward them. So in the polish phase, this is a great, great time to add it. There's plenty of areas in Once Upon a Coma where we're not rewarding the player at all. They walk down a hallway, nothing's there. Well, in the polish phase, I don't necessarily have to add an item that they get at the end of the hallway. I can simply add a story element. And you can see that in the clock, there's, there's a hidden message. Um, and I can also add characters to the scene that maybe give you some backstory. 
So those are my five tips for working on your very first game. Uh, if you really like this video, please hit subscribe. If we can hit 12,000 subscribers by November 1st, I'm gonna do something that I'm really scared of. I'm gonna face one of my biggest fears and that's jumping out of a plane. And I'll take you with me. I'll record a video, jump out of a plane, and I'll also try and relate that to video game development because video game development can be scary. So please leave a comment. I'd love to answer your questions. Hit subscribe. If you wanna see two more um, bonus tips, see the rest of this video, just head on over to my Patreon page. Um, become a patron and you can watch those final tips. Thanks guys.